So I thought today we'd talk about masking and subdivisions because the two work in a really strange way inside ZBrush. Here I have a simple cube and you'll notice that if I mask out off a certain area, that area is masked. So when I hit Ctrl D or divide here, normally when I hit divide, I'll get another subdivision. If I have an area that's masked and I hit divide, I won't get that new subdivision, but I will get those other areas divided. And I can continue to do this as many times as I like and it will continue to subdivide everywhere except for the masked area. If I remove my mask and I now hit divide, I'm going to get a new subdivision and you'll see that it will, it will divide the entire mesh. So I can divide this a couple of times and then say, let's say for example, I mask an area here now and decide actually I'm going to divide everywhere except for this. If I hit divide now, I'll get an error saying this may only be modified while the lowest subdivision is active. Or we can switch the lowest subdivision level. We can either switch the lowest subdivision or we can delete freeze. So let's do that. Let's go down to the lowest subdivision level. And while we have that area masked here, you can see our point count is 924. At the top it was 14,000. While I'm down to that lower one, I can hit divide. And it's now going to divide everywhere except for this masked area. And you'll see our point count has now gone from 14,000 at our maximum subdivision up to 57,000. So it has divided everywhere except for that masked area at the lowest subdivision. If we go back down, you can see that's what it did. It divided everything that was there previously. So I'll just undo that last division. This is what it looked like before we hit divide. And as we said before, when it's masked, no new subdivisions will be added. It will simply subdivide everything that is unmasked. Where this comes in useful is if you decide, actually, I want more detail here so I can invert my mask at this lowest subdivision level and then say divide. And that way I'll be getting more details in this area without changing the amount of subdivisions we have here. So I can divide that. This now has more details and we still have our three subdivisions. The thing to be careful about here is if we're on a character model, I have one here and I have six subdivisions. And if you accidentally have masked an area that's relatively small and you decide you'd like another subdivision and so you, you go to divide and it says, oh, you can't do that. Go down to the lowest subdivision level. So obviously at the top subdivision level, you should always be able to divide. If you can't, if, if you're getting that message, that means that either a part of your model is hidden like that or a part of your model is masked. Either of these will give you that same error message. So if I remove my mask or just do this and try and divide, it's going to give me the exact same error as if I had everything back and I had just masked an area and hit divide. So the big thing to avoid is accidentally having a masked area somewhere on your model that you don't see, realizing at this level that it won't allow you and then mistakenly saying, okay, I'll just follow the instructions. I'll go down to the lowest subdivision level and then I'll do my divide from there. When you go back up your subdivisions and it will automatically pop you back up, you'll notice that this geometry over here is now all messed up. We've now basically divided that area or, or divided every area except for this. So our lowest resolution is nowhere near what it used to be. This lowest subdivision now is 9,000 polygons. If I undo that masked area and that divide, see originally it was 2,370. So don't ever divide at the lowest subdivision level when you have multiple subdivisions, unless you really want to, unless there's, there's some, you have a very specific reason for doing so. So yeah, hope this helps. And as usual, don't forget to click like and subscribe for more content like this. All right, cheers, bye.